one guy enjoying a bonfire all to himself <laughs> okay so welcome back to M Hood Fishing everybody I've already been on a big ride oh, so yeah back there what I wanted to do did not work out things are flooded let's go see if I can find a spot that will work out he had enough of the bonfire <laughs> all right you talked me into it we'll get a better look This spot is called Shingle Point. People have bonfires here on a regular basis. This is the first time I've seen one person. I don't know if he lit it, I'm assuming he did. I was here earlier on my way to where I wanted to go do stuff where I couldn't end up doing what I wanted to do. There was a pile of garbage there. It's like mostly fence boards and some other things. You can tell by the color and the smoke that it's garbage. It's not just fence boards. It's treated wood and whatever, all kinds of stuff in that pile. I've seen that car down here before. So we're not leaving it to itself. Like I said, it's pretty normal to find a bonfire there. Usually there's a bunch of people, but... So I was at this spot the other day, did a video here. I just need a spot. It's the closest one. Let's see what it looks like. This most certainly doesn't look much different than the last time I was here. The spots that I was just looking at we're a lot more flooded. The tide is up, tide is in right now. But the other spots that I was wanting to fish, it's more about the access points, extremely flooded by the rain we had previously this week. I think before I commit to this spot, let's go look at another access point for this and see if we can do something there because we were here just the other day. So this is a man-made oxbow and where I fished the other day where we were just looking, that is the upriver side of it and it's very narrow there. Down here towards the middle, if we can get a spot, it's a little wider. It's just, what does the spot look like? Well, this is what it looks like. You see these trees right here and then this one here. The actual bank is somewhere in front of them. So just in front of those trees, it starts to slope down. It's already kind of sloping down. I mean, I don't think I'm gonna walk any further because the ground is getting very soft. I'm just, the water level is just under my knees. If you look across, that is those trees over there, the little twigs coming out, that is the far bank. That is all rocks, even along there where those trees, bigger trees are. So it's quite wide here. Might be able to fish this. I kind of like this, even though it's gonna be complicated. I like it because the bike is right here with me. I don't have to leave it out of sight. We're gonna do two rods here and we're gonna set them up this far back. You can look down here at this spool. We've got one sand spike, second one there. This is gonna be really fun because there's current we're gonna have to, when the fish gets on, we're gonna have to take it, the rod out this way where I'm gonna cast, play the fish and try not to get it wrapped around stuff. So this should be fun. The first session, plan A, was an even more complicated situation, but that's for another day now. All right, the rig I'm working with tonight is pretty much the same one I was working with last night. Four ounces, no roll, because this current is a little strong. Ooh, there's mullet in here. I brought the cast net too. And look at that. We got, oh, mullet. That is a piece of mullet actually right there on a six octopus. I'm getting preoccupied because there's, it seems to be mullet or something right here where I'm standing. Let's see if that four ounce drifts any. It's drifting a little bit. How much are you gonna drift? 
oh man this current is swifter than i thought this is going to be crazy first crazy position in position now for the second crazy position the, oh there's a wake coming in here the last time i did a, a session on this oxbow a few days ago i did get some nice sizes out of here and it is the right time of year for blue cats and flatheads to come up into shallow things like this because the river's into this right now so i think we're gonna get something it's just can we get it can we get it in without it wrapping us around something all right the second bait i want to put slightly up current so hopefully it stops drifting way before this one which i have a good feeling this looks like maybe the worst right now the worst thing to deal with this tree right here but there's other things the fish could wrap us around if he goes that way are you gonna stop <laughs> this is still drifting hopefully these lines are not real close to each other it doesn't look like they're super like close not on top of each other but that presents a problem for me the closeness <laughs> we could catch one of the lines as we bring a fish in oh see it shaking see it going nuts it hasn't been out very long are you on yeah whoa We gotta go hopefully hopefully nothing hits that other one as i deal with this and oh my goodness it feels like these lines are on top of each other we do have a fish here and it feels like a good fish i have the fish grips in my pocket how to play this fish get the line out of the tree where did this fish go I don't know what's going on with the line oh I see the fish can we get him over that I know right in this area oh my goodness the this is messed up this is messed up oh shoot we got to get the line back over this way What a mess. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this. Just somehow the line <clears throat> went over this tree here. But I think we have a solid hookup. It's not a real big fish, by the way.
Yes, I got my fish. Well, that was super complicated just for this little guy, but a lot of fun. Did you guys see I got up on that timber? <laughs> it was just floating there. Yeah, you're right. Complicated, but fun. We're gonna try this one more time. I've got everything out of my pockets except for the fish grip because I might have to get totally wet to get the next fish. I'm not sure. Let's see if I can use this stick. Get this line a little bit straight out of these limbs of this bush here. Oh, I'm sinking. Looks like we're getting a bite. It's not the same rod, but it's in the same position as the first bite. Rod tip is slowly bouncing up and down, very slowly. This would be a fun session to bring someone who is totally new to fishing and tell them, you gotta, Go over there in the water and get that fish out of the limbs. <laughs> well, that'd be fun. It's not deep. And of course, you know, if you do that, make sure, make sure you're ready to go save your friend. Don't do that. You gonna take it down? You guys see that? Little dit, 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 dit. That is a tail piece of, of fillet style bait off the tail. I was figuring this, this particular bait here wouldn't last very long because it could easily get tore up. Whereas the other one looks like a fillet style, but it's actually on the bone. Oh, he's taking it down now. It might be a small fish that's already hooked up. Yeah. Look at that. There we go. Yeah, I feel him. He's there. All right, let's go deal with the mess. This is going to be messy. I kind of did some pruning out here to where we shouldn't have the same problems as before, but he's all the way this way and there's a lot of stuff that he could wrap us on before I worry about that I want to get out here try to get him close to us mono is a good idea for a situation like this because there's a lot of stuff here that would just make a mess out of braid fray it cut it I don't think this is a big fish and I I feel the line coming up against something. That fish might get stuck at the same spot as the first one, too. Oh, I still feel him. He's not big. There we go. Got him out. Oh, I think we got a different species here. we go that is a good size channel cat look at that yeah decent there's a little hog of a channel cat decent I'm in a little bit of a predicament I'm a little bit indecisive right now look down here that rod is gone I've packed it up it is almost eight o'clock it's like 7 45 or something like that check it out we are definitely getting past the sunset so i was about to pull this rod and it's getting one of those pesky little bites but it's just enough of a bite to make me sit here and wait because i didn't want to fish this particular spot in the dark 
kind of wanting to go do other things or something else I have in mind to do later tonight. But yeah, uh, it's always tough at this moment. Do you ignore the little bite and just pull it or do you wait? We can wait a little longer. Just take care of whatever's left to do, I suppose. Give it a few more minutes. All right, I've waited long enough. It's time to go. I'm probably going to come back out again tonight because there's something running in the river at night right now that I'd like to take advantage of. So that is the next video, and I will say no more. Thanks for watching, subscribing, and I'll see you next time.